Hi guys, we're going to look at four apps that are available for flying waypoint missions with the new DJI Mavic Pro. We're going to be flying in this beautiful cemetery, Historic Point. Of course the GoP uh, app has been around for some time and flies waypoints, but it's kind of clunky. There's a new GSP app out by DJI, we're going to have a look. Leechy's been out for a while, as has FPV Camera, and finally Autopilot has a very elaborate program for flying waypoints. We're looking at them under stability, whether or not that the um, craft responds smoothly. Ease of use, what's the learning curve like, uh, additional features that may be available, and then finally value, is it a good bang for the buck? We're going to be flying past a temple monument in this uh, Chinese cemetery and trying to get a cinematographic feel for the shot as we go by it. If we just fly in the uh, Go app, yeah, you can do it, but it's difficult to smoothly yaw the camera and turn it to the side and then tip the gimbal down in the process. I've got all my hands going here and it's, it's a little bit tricky. If I lock the Mavic into course lock, it's a little bit better. The heading stays the, uh, straight and I can do the yaw and gimbal smoother now, but um, I have a hard time with the speed and also the Mavic controller for gimbal is just not very precise. Coming back from that same shot, I'm in home lock. Again, it maintains a nice straight line back to me, which allows me to work with the uh, yaw and gimbal again. But it's, again, uh, a difficult shot to get smooth and to make it look really, uh, really professional. So we'll try it to DJI's new product, their GS Ground Station Pro. We start zooming in on the uh, cemetery here in this uh, map view. We'll select waypoint route, and by putting tap, on here it means that we're going to be um, putting our waypoints directly on the map with our tap of our finger. So we'll establish our starting point. All these programs are similar in that you can establish global parameters for the whole route. So we're going to establish uh, the altitude for the plane will fly at, um, its uh, gimbal pitch, its speed, and in this case here, we're asking it to come back and hover at the end of its last waypoint instead of landing. So we're going to start adding the waypoints along the way here. And it's really tapping and uh, creating a path for the uh, plane to follow. We'll return that last point just past where we're standing. We'll start looking at each individual point. Although we've set the points globally, <coughs> we can make individual adjustments to each point as well. Our point of interest is within that red circle. That's the uh, temple. Uh, altar right there. So we're going to just slide that aircraft heading back and forth. You see that little pointing arrow is uh, now pointing at it. So that is going to be where our point of interest is looking at. And we've set the gimbal pitch to about 15 degrees below the horizon, which hopefully will get it in the shot. It's a little bit trial and error. The next thing is to go to each waypoint and establish that each waypoint is correct as well. So we have to make sure that the um, aircraft heading direction is correct for the gimbal and the slider. Now the GS Pro app on this is an iPad mini is actually pretty hard to use. It's a very tiny setting and it's very finicky with your fingers. So uh, I find it a bit awkward and it'd be even more awkward with a phone but uh, this is not a bad display. And also you want to make sure that the rotation of the camera clockwise or counterclockwise follows the direction of flight. So Sometimes it's a good idea just to sort of look at that, visualize it with a pen, which way would that be pointing, and you can see I'm swinging that around to make sure it's still pointing at the, uh, the temple point of interest. And we'll go to the last corner and ensure that again uh, all the settings are correct as far as altitude, um, heading, gimbal pitch. Further away you are from your point of interest, generally the shallower the gimbal pitch is. So if you're up close it's going to have to pitch down sharply. When you're further away, you'll get a, a, a gentler pitch on that gimbal. You want to have nice smooth. Your first flight should always be really simple with these systems here. Set up a very simple box. Don't make it too elaborate. Don't have too many height changes or pitch changes or speed changes. That will come with time. Keep it really simple. So now you need to uh, save that, label it, and that will be available um, for once you're out in the field to actually run it. So we're in the field, we open up the menu, we will select waypoint, our saved loops will come up on that, and then we can load that. So this is, you go to the edit button in the corner, 
and it will tell you if everything's ready to fly and load and you start your waypoint mission. So we've done this at home, now we're trying it out here and actually it looks like a pretty good guess. You see we're pointing slightly down. We have enough offset from the object to get it in fully in the uh, frame. It's doing a nice sweep by. What's interesting about the GS Pro is that it actually, at this time, does not do curved corners. It stops at each corner, slowly rotates the uh, gimbal around, takes the next uh, shot, stops at the corner, and then uh, continues the flight. If that's what you want, it's great, but um, most of the other applications have continuous corners, so there's no actual stopping of the uh, Mavic in flight. But overall, I am uh, very impressed for the first time out of the box on this one. Uh, worked quite nicely. So we're going to go to Leechy now. Leechy has an interesting thing. They actually have a website where you can go to and go online and look at other people's uh, missions, um, right down to the point of each individual uh, waypoint. And then if they did a video and have uploaded it, you can click on the video that they did of that, that uh, flight. It's pretty fantastic. And you can copy those uh, way missions to your own program. But in this case here, let's do our own. So we're gonna take the same area. We're gonna choose a point of interest target. We're going to start uh, making waypoints. In this case here, I'm gonna try a batch setting where I'm gonna draw a line in front of the uh, point of interest and it will set up a uh, waypoint uh, along the way here. Again, like I did before, uh, setting up global parameters, trying to get close to 10 meters in altitude and about, I think I'm using 30 mean kilometers per hour, roughly for um, cruising speed. Yeah, I'm gonna skip the curve size for the corners and we'll look at the headings later when we look at individual things. Importantly here though is fo hitting focus point of interest, FP. OI that will tell the um, the gimbal what angle to start to pointing at at each waypoint. It will calculate that that special uh, spot to go to. So I'm just tapping waypoints along the way here, and you can see from the symbols that it's pointing right at that point of interest and has established the gimbal angle. I'm now going to go through each waypoint just to make sure that the height, speed, and gimbal angle and heading are all correct save it again, label it, and then I can take that out into the field and run that program. Uh, it has also uh, cached the map in the background, so I don't have to be connected to uh, internet or Wi-Fi to be able to access it. So we're flying that flight now, and it looks pretty good. Coming right along on it. I'd really like to um, say how great Leechy is, but uh, this is probably one of about seven flights I've done here. And I must admit that some of the other ones had odd things happening where the, uh, the gimbal would start to wander around, looking around, the speed would slow up, uh, speed, speed up and slow down, and, and odd things would happen. By the way, these uh, <coughs> flights are about two to three times faster than they, than they are in, in real life. I sped it up here just to keep this video from going on forever. So I did an interpolation flight where I'm kind of going point to point with gimbal changes. And you can see how rocky this looks. Uh, it's lumpy, it's going up and down. Uh, there's, there's jerkiness in here. And uh, overall, there's an instability in the uh, Leechy app that uh, I think has to be corrected. So let's have a look at FPV. FPV is powerful. It's a great one for using goggles with. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna go to Mission Planner here, but uh, I'm pretty impressed with this program. Uh, again, similar uh, sort of setting is that we start with a uh, home point. We're going to have it come back to our um, first setting here. We're setting up the uh, global speeds, turn home choices, we have it hover. Uh, we're now establishing the home point. We're going to start tapping to add on our waypoints. You can see the information up there. The program I chose in this particular uh, FPV waypoint is um, not having a point of interest that uh, I'm going to actually try to fly this one myself to try to keep it in the, the line and I'm really more or less setting up the waypoints to just guide the path of the aircraft. The height of the uh, individual waypoints is seen there. Uh, that's 10 meters above the number. And um, just going through it, we'll be... Uh, have a quick look to review the whole thing. It also tells you how long it's going to take, how much battery it uses up, uh, how far it flies. It has a lot of information that you get on the screen here. So we've got this all. We're, we're saving it and uh, we'll now go out in the field and launch this FPV camera. 
So far so good. It's a little bit bouncy as you can see because I'm doing the yaw control now. And the gimbal, I didn't manage to get it down fast enough in time for the flight. And you can see that my whole thing of trying to sort of half control it and half not control it is I'm doing a hack job of it. So I would say that if you're going to go at uh, waypoints, you should probably fly as autonomously as possible and skip the uh, human yaw control. So autopilot is a very powerful program. It has a lot of settings and a lot of features that it can do. We're just going to look at waypoint here. So we're going to expand the waypoint menu. And again, globally set the altitude. We're going to go for about 10 meters. Nice big numbers, easy to set. And set the average speed. We can, again, override this between waypoints anytime we want. The default settings are pretty good. Camera starts up with the motor startup and it shuts off and the motor shut off. Click on the map view icon, brings the map up to full screen. We start our, uh, our setting waypoint. This map puts a lot of symbols, a lot of symbols on this thing. It can be very confusing and intimidating. But there's a way of dealing with it by going down to a thing called map layers where you can shut the uh, symbols off that you don't need. All of these programs, by the way, except for the DJI one, do, do screen recording. So you can actually go back in and see what you've done kind of play it back to yourself and see uh, you know the settings that you've made and all that kind of thing it's very useful to have and some recorded audio as well so here right now I'm adding the new uh, waypoints and it's drawing the uh, curved corners lots of data on each corner of the waypoint and the final thing I need to do really is to set up a point of interest to uh, see what are all these waypoints going to pick so I'm going to go to a camera trigger which is going to make a little emblem for me to drag into the top of the temple now and uh, finally, it does a neat thing called Path Inspector, where you just hit that and it shows you the trajectory of the, uh, the Mavic, uh, where the, gamb the gimbal's pointing, and make sure that everything is running expected to be. So, perfect. So, we're going to save that, label it again. Uh, it's got the maps cached in the background, so we don't have to worry about that. Now we're flying it. So, we're out in the field. It's looking pretty good. I'm uh, pretty happy with uh, the autopilot. It's, again, a little intimidating at first. It did a little hesitation there, which was kind of interesting. I don't know what that was about. It might have been the way the low sun was um, hitting the uh, sensors in it that kind of freaked out the Mavic. So overall, stability-wise, of course, the DJI product is going to be rock solid with its own, uh, as the autopilot was as well. Uh, FPV had a little bit of um, shakiness going on there in Lychee. Uh, I'm just plain stuff was going wrong. Gimbal was wandering around. Ease of use. Uh, again, the Mavic is probably the most simplest or the DJI one. Autopilot, pretty complicated. It's going to take a while to really get that one down. FPV, yeah, fairly straightforward once you've done it. And same with Lychee. I think they're pretty straightforward. They've been around for a long time comes down to features. They all have special features, which is amazing. Uh, the DJI one, probably the least of them all, but the autopilot has got some great stuff. FPV, I showed you there uh, online. It's fantastic as well. And same with Lychee, the FPV goggles, pretty amazing. So they're all actually pretty well stocked with features. In terms of value, well, can't go wrong with zero dollars. That's the DJI. Autopilot's most expensive and uh, yeah, Probably could do a little bit better with FPV and Leachy. I think they're a little bit more in keeping. Leachy, I'd like to say, had better value, but it was unstable. And I'm hoping they fix that in an oncoming product. So in summary, you can't go wrong with the GS Pro. You have to get it. Um, Leachy and FPV, pretty nice. Very close. Uh, Autopilot is a, is a great program. It may be a bit professional. It's probably not entry level. But uh, Leachy, the downside is until they fix that, uh, that wonky gimbal and... Um, flight pattern, I, I have to downgrade them. But, you know, overall, these apps are fantastic, and they really have uh, increased the enjoyment level of flying this and, and novel experiences. And I mean, you start with a simple loop, expand that out, and you'll really have a repeatable, uh, exceptional photographic experience, I think, with this uh, great device and really well thought through software. And it's pretty cheap. Thanks for watching.